It's now time to bring a feature on the show today as we focus on the aviation sector. The United Arab Emirates today announced that, with effect from today, passengers on transit flights from Nigeria, India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Nepal and Uganda can now enter the United Arab Emirates. However, direct flights from Nigeria and the, these other countries are still banned until further notice. The lifting of the ban on transit flights was disclosed in a statement by the National Emergency and Crisis Management Authority made available in a series of tweets. Now, the agency said passengers would be able to transit through its airports from today as long as they present negative PCR tests taken 72 hours before departure. Now, these categories include those with valid residency permits who have received full vaccination doses in the United Arab Emirates and 14 days have passed since receiving the second dose and who have also vaccination certificates approved by the official authorities in the country. Medical personnel working in the country will be ex excluded, including doctors, nurses, technicians from restaurants and non-restaurants, and those working in the educational sector in the country who teach in universities, colleges, schools and institutes, and from the vaccinated and non-vaccinated categories. Students studying in the country, humanitarian cases also hold valid residency and workers in federal and local government agencies in cases of completing treatment in the country, whether they are vaccinated or not, will also be excluded. All these categories will be required to submit a request on the website of the Federal Authority for Identity and Citizenship to obtain the necessary approvals in addition to the certificates of vaccination certified by relevant authorities in the country for the categories from which these certificates are required. Joining me now via Skype to discuss this and much more, I have Chukwereka Achum, the Chief Operating Officer of Jet Support Services. Good to have you on The Breakfast Show this morning. Thank you for having me, David. Now, let's start uh, first and foremost with the back and forth we've had so far uh, with regards to flight suspensions and bans uh, to the UAE. We've had a lifting of bans of transit flights for now. The list includes countries like Nigeria, India, Sri Lanka and Uganda starting today. Let's have your thoughts on this development versus the safety protocol. Uh, well, David, I think um, it, the, the, the issue here is uh, from, from, a technical po from a technical point of view, I mean, the issue here is the categorization of Nigeria. Um, amongst uh, uh, the other countries which you've mentioned. I mean, if you look at the data, uh, especially with infection rates and death rates in Nigeria due to COVID-19, from the data we have, you will see that Nigeria is, I think, with uh, one of the, the, the most, uh, the, the least uh, uh, infected uh, rates or infection rates or death mm. rates uh, in the world. So, um, well, the, the, the problem the Nigerian government has with the UAE government is uh, with, like I said, the, the categorization or the, the profiling of Nigeria amongst these nations uh, that you have just mentioned. So it's uh, looking more or less like a diplomatic problem rather than um, a purely technical uh, uh, problem. And how does this also make you feel, uh, as a player in the industry, direct flights from Nigeria and these other countries are still banned until further notice, but transit flights are uh, accepted? Does this really make uh, the most sense to you at this point in time, citing the fact that Nigeria's infection cases are not as high as those of India and other countries on this list? Yes, I, I mean, D Dubai is a major destination hub for the, a lot of Nigerians doing business, leisure, um, and, you know, even work. Uh, so, still including Nigeria in that list is a, a bit worrisome. However, um, I think the Nigerian government also reciprocated the ban. And uh, even though the, the, the UAE has uh, come up to lift the bans uh, for transit through Dubai, it is yet to be seen if the Nigerian government is also going to reciprocate that uh, gesture and allow at least the, the issue here is um, uh, they have now realized that Nigeria, of course, Nigeria has 
Uh, David, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay. Well, uh, Nigeria is a tr huge travel market, and um, lifting the ban on Nigeria to transit through will cater to customers who use Dubai as uh, a transit hub for destinations such as Asia, mm. the Middle East, even America and Europe. So the, this lifting of the ban, I would say, tilts advantageously only towards the, the UAE, not uh, to the Nigerian carriers. Mm. And now with the uncertainty that comes with the COVID-19 and the variant, the Delta variant and other concerns being a major issue as it now, how do we also enhance safety protocols at our own end so that we could also have uh, such a situations not become the norm and accelerate airline capacities to also upgrade and meet the needs of the time? How do you think we can move this sort of situation to a better standing point so that Nigeria is not necessarily looked at with the eye of other developing countries that don't necessarily have their acts together? Well, I think in terms of aviation, Nigeria has actually championed the public health corridor concept, which was uh, developed by the International Civil Aviation Organization regarding um, airlines operating during the COVID-19 pandemic. Nigeria um, actually plays a huge role, or I think if not one of the champions in Africa. Um, you, we have fully dem domesticated uh, the concepts in this, in this uh, public health protocol, and uh, Nigerian airlines are complying. The compliance is uh, anywhere between 90 and 100 percent. Um, all airlines in the country have adopted and the Civil Aviation Authority has ensured that all airlines not only have just adopted, but ratified them in their standard operating manuals. So, um, in terms of uh, new protocols, there's really nothing new. Um, the protocols are still the same. There has never, there's not been any revisions to accommodate the recent COVID-19 pandemic mm. variant, the Delta variant. And, um, I mean, uh, the compliance on, on the part of the airlines has been very, very... Um, very good, and we we just uh, like we said, we, we we really don't know where this is coming from with regarding the UAE ban, but um, it's looking more like a diplomatic. Uh, problem rather mm. than a purely technical issue. Definitely, this has to deal with bilateral relations, but at the end of the day, let's also look at some of the forecasts you have now. Looking at travel hubs and destinations, what do you think is going to be the new pattern as we're looking at uh, the second half of this year and the future of aviation? Uh, well, domestically, we have seen um, a rebound, uh, like we had said previously on, on several forums. Uh, the domestic travel in Nigeria has uh, witnessed the resurgence. Um, the passenger demand is now back. Um, uh, on the supply side, we, we airlines are beginning to return aircraft to service. So the demand domestically is here. However, on the international scale, it's a, it's a different ballgame. Nigerian carriers are not really big players when it comes to the international scene. So our policies like... Um, you know, with some policies from the UAE or policies from any other country, doesn't really affect the business performance of, of Nigerian airlines because uh, Nigerian airlines are predominantly uh, domestic players. So, in terms of uh, forecasts, uh, I mean, uh, the COVID, the, the Delta variant is the only um, fear. However, uh, we've not seen any impact of that uh, of this. Uh, that variant on uh, domestic demand. Mm. Thank you very much for your time on The Breakfast Show this morning. Chukwereka Achum, it's been a pleasure speaking with you as the Chief Operating Officer of Jet Support Services, and we hope we have increased vaccinations. And at the end of the day, the aviation sector has taken so much of it, we just need the clear air and bright skies to be able to have a fresher welcome for the aviation sector. Thank you once again for your time on The Breakfast Show this Thank morning. Thank you very much, David.